I write a poem. The place I'm from is far away. She's wide and flat and brown. When looking at a globe, she's just the one under and down. She raised me up and taught me almost everything I know, like how to live and love and shape the way I learned to grow. And though I had no say in where my folks chose to reside, I always sort of had a sense of patriotic pride. I'd always felt connected from a space somewhere within. See, that's the thing about this place. She gets under your skin. So when the time had come, after two decades and a half, to go and see the world, she didn't scoff, she didn't laugh. She understood I had so much I needed to explore and that I would return, for she had seen my kind before. And thus I ventured out and joined an ignominious posse of dreamers living far from home, expatriated Aussies. The streets of Brooklyn, London's Eye, an Indonesian sizzler, cafes in Paris, clubs in Rome, or every shop in Whistler. You hear our voices far and wide like members of a club fanning out across the world, quite often in a pub. We smile when people mimic us, quote Crocodile Dundee. To them we sound absurd. I guess we do to a degree. They talk about the snakes and sharks as if it's some big fuss. I couldn't live down there, they say. We say that's fine by us. Somehow the months turn into several trips around the sun. Yet that tie to the motherland's as strong as on day one. Regardless though how far away I happen to have wandered, I'll always check to see who won the hottest of the hundred. I'll somehow find a pub to watch the granny on the telly, and four days before Christmas I will always play Paul Kelly. It really doesn't matter just how far or wide I roam. The boy from Oz is right, I guess. It's never not your home. And when I cross another Aussie travelling a while, We'll nod and say good day, and then we'll share a knowing smile. You see, we know it matters really not that much at all if England takes the Ashes home or World Cup hopes are small. Perhaps we won't get quite as many medals as the Yanks. At Wimbledon, we might not have a top ten in the ranks. Because we've still got the greatest gift, a wonder all its own, a paradise of sand and sun we get to call our home. I think about her often, and that feeling comes along, that warm, familiar pride that tells me She's where I belong. And crowded house comes on in some strange far-flung foreign bar. My eyes sting for a moment. Man, sometimes I do feel far. The purpose of these verses, though, is not to hear me muse. It's what I saw this morning when I opened up the news. My heart stopped for a second and my throat became too tight. Her name was in the headlines. She didn't look all right. I had to sit, I couldn't quite believe my own two eyes. She looked unrecognisable. I'd never seen those skies. That's not the place I grew up in, that's not what I remember. Bushfires never started up so early as September. It's much too much to fathom that your homeland has succumbed to such a horror, and they say the worst is yet to come. I stare as they evacuate and watch as children choke, and you, our New Zealander neighbours now are coughing on our smoke. I'm looking at a mile of fencing lined with blackened shapes. Koalas, possums, kangaroos with no chance of escape. So far we've burned about three times the land as the Brazilians. And as for all those animals, we're up to half a billion. Don't be afraid, they tell me, of a little Aussie coal. This stuff is worth a fortune. It's like carbonised black gold. So what if it's not great in an environmental sense? Just think of the economy. Don't focus on science. Now's not the time to talk about our planet getting hotter, or fire seasons lengthening, or folks who don't have water. It's sad we've lost some good people, a fiery or three. At least they all died knowing we've a healthy GDP. I mustered that old Aussie pride, but to my disbelief, discovered only anger there, and overwhelming grief. We say we love our country, but that leaves a bit of taste. Our apathy to climate change should make us feel disgraced. We're so concerned with digging up that black stuff from the ground, myself I'd rather half a billion animals around. But then I see those photos of dark figures in the fray, the tiny silhouettes struggling to keep the flames at bay. I read about the volunteers who stepped up to the tragedy and spent their Christmas in the blaze instead of with their family. I read in awe about our fearless firefighting crews, who could give up at any time they want, but they refuse. 
men and women out there in the midst of devastation upon their yellow jackets pin the prayers of a nation. I watch as ordinary Aussies rise to the occasion, feeding precious animals half dead from dehydration. They're sending in their clothes and food to those who've lost it all. The kids are even raising cash with cupcakes and a stall. And suddenly I get the pang of something deep inside. The one that starts down in my gut and rises like a tide. The same one that runs through me, putting fire in my veins. It now glows deep within and so much brighter than those flames. And though I'm far away from her, right now when she is ailing, I know I've never been so proud to call myself Australian. Please donate anything you can.